A number of CMOS farmers in St. Patrick are now better equipped to successfully cultivate CMOS, having participated in a sustainable training program which took place at the Sateras Brickwater. The training focused primarily on cultivating and managing Gracilaria CMOS, showcasing three cultivation methods, the monoline system and two variations of bamboo raft systems. Farmers received detailed instructions on the essentials of tying and spacing, crucial factors for successful cultivation and higher yields. Agriculture and Fisheries Representative in the Senate, Roderick Sinclair, was there to offer support. And if we can grow these things in Grenada in a sustainable way, which is what I'm seeing here, you know, using the bamboo, you know, and all of those things, this is excellent. But not only that, the, the, the sort of research um, our good brother, uh, Mr. Noel and, and others, has shown us today, it means that even among ourselves, we can continue to do our own technique. But how do we do it amidst protecting the turtles, the fishing, because those are challenges that are unique to our space. The floating raft method was deemed the most effective approach for cultivating sea moss. The training was facilitated by Donnell Noel. He recommended the use of bamboo rafts as, as a preferred method to that of processed floating devices and netting in order to protect the sea moss from potential harm. Now the bamboo raft method allows us to be as efficient and environmentally friendly as possible. It allows our lines that we cultivate CMOS on to be very close without causing any major disturbance. For instance, them getting intertwined and the CMOS breaking off and so forth. And the bamboo is not a pollutant, so if it breaks free or it gets loose for whatever reason, that bamboo will bio, it's, it's biodegradable and will decompose without causing any pollution. With Pridia Larsen, a constant challenge affecting CMOS farmers, CSA coordinator at SIEP, Kenley Edwards, emphasized the urgent need for the passing of Pridia Larsen Amendment Act to address this problem. This is something that must be addressed because this is a livelihood. And when someone puts the effort into a particular production and then for them to suffer these losses, it could be disheartening. And we know that this is a very lucrative, um, um, if I may say, product that has several benefits. Benefits that is good for us as humans to consume and I want us to continue to support. The exercise organized by the St. Patrick Organization for Development was aimed at promoting sustainable self-employment opportunities for the residents of St. Patrick. Jefferson David, president of SPOD, encouraged more individuals from the parish to engage in CMOS farming. They're saying that St. Patrick's are the poorest set of people. But um, if, if the people get involved into the production of CMOS planting and stuff, um, I think we could get out of this saying that we are poor. Um, and I think that we can, we can benefit from it. Um, I myself um, was never interested in it, but Coming here today and learning so much, um, I have a boat myself. I decided to go up the island and start planting. I just spoke to Mr. Merriman um, in terms of planting. So um, the people around the area can get involved. And, and I think that's, that's a good thing for the parish. Christina John, GBN News.